exercise. The next exercise would be if you if you dive deeper into the details and you want to actually start from the programming elements and start doing a blocking and stacking and maybe decide that it shouldn't be a two-story building, it should be a one-story or it should be a three-story, uh, you can actually use these um, elements that, that um, would define the pro FPP program requirements coming from Fusion. Um, we also have uh, at the site level, I forgot to mention, uh, I believe uh, the Foundation for Com California Community Colleges is going to be adding additional GIS layers to show how new GIS data can actually be brought in here. Right now we have minimal GIS layers, uh, just the map, the site elements and the building elements are in GIS here, I believe. Yeah, there we go. So what we have from the GIS server coming to the foundation are these um, the campus buildings and um, uh, the uh, campus sites, and we'll, you'll be seeing some new layers coming in there. So we want to actually show that functionality as well, that we have GIS data merging in with BIM used for facility uh, for master planning as part of this exercise. Okay. Um, the next thing I'd like to show is um, the completed model. If we go to the complete opposite end of the spectrum, if we go into the completed model and open up this medical clinic, which now also has the equivalent Revit model, Revit architectural, Revit MEP, and Navisworks model. Uh, this is being used, this is, this is a model provided by the Building Smart Alliance. It's on their website. It's a public model that can be shared, uh, giving them credit for sharing this model with us um, that we're using for this BIM storm. Um, and uh, this model actually has all the way down to equipment elements inside each space, including all the associated attributes from Kobe. You'll notice the adjacency lines here are the, are the same ones that I showed earlier, but now they're actually in the resolved state where you can actually see the different clinics and the waiting areas. And the intent on this model is, uh, for example, last year Broadus & Associates was involved with evaluating Kobe, the, co the quality of the Kobe data as it went through the design and construction and, and um, handover process. So that's one thing that can be used here. We can actually do an export for example, to Kobe from this and do an analysis of that or import it into other Kobe compliant applications. And I know that I just talked to Igor and Ecodomus, uh, could be doing part of that of, of taking the same building and showing it of how it works in Ecodomus with the Kobe files, Kobe data. Um, in the opposite direction, if we want to take this model and do a different version of this, uh, we, we're going to have uh, Beck Technologies with D, D uh, Profiler. Uh, involved with this, so there might be some uh, uh, design work done of taking this model and trying different strategies of, from the construction point of view of uh, uh, using deep profiler tools, um, which they are linked now to the Onuma server for using BIM XML. That's one um, way to get data out to them. Um, cost estimating would be part of this. Um, energy analysis, whatever you want. So if you use this building, a completed Revit model, and do other types of analysis, either simulating what it would look like while you're doing, going through the design and construction process or preparing this for handover to go into facility management and operations. Um, maybe I'll pause here. Are there any questions? And maybe we could pass it over to Thomas just to show quickly some ideas of what we can do here with this. Thomas, are you ready? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. Okay, no questions from the audience, or you can unmute anybody that wants to talk. Um, if somebody wants to talk, uh, there's a little raise your hand icon, and I can unmute you. But currently, I think we're fine to just pass to Thomas. Okay. Okay. 